Good day, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is August 25th, 2010, and I'm Dargo. Thank you again for joining me. This is the War on Terror, Liberty, and Sovereignty uh, news bulletin for today. Uh, this first article is a little uh, different from my usual, but I thought I'd cover it just because it's kind of interesting. This is from the London Telegraph. Russia orders uh, 2,000 inflatable copies of planes, tanks, and missiles to fool enemies. The Russian Defense Ministry has ordered elaborate inflatable copies of its most ubiquitous planes, tanks, and missiles at a cost of almost, what is this, is this 2,000 pounds per model to fool its enemies into future conflicts, says the p purchase has drawn sharp criticism from military analysts who say the Kremlin should be spending its oil wealth on buying real military hardware rather than rubber copies. And the first thing I thought about was World War II, because uh, if any of, any of you that are a little history savvy, savvy buffs, or history buffs in general, have uh, heard of this being used um, by, I thought, I heard about the Germans using it, um, but I, when I looked into this, it's called a dummy tank, and it was actually used in World War One, and for the first time, and in World War Two, the Allies and the Axis both used it. The British who designed them called them spoofs. The Americans used them as well, said that before the war began, the Wehrmacht utilized uh, mock tanks to practice tactics and train their troops and um, yeah so it's a good thing um, to have uh, when you're in a war because it will basically just deflects or distracts or disorients or confuses the enemy uh, in their intelligence gathering um, and so this actually isn't a waste of money for me you know I don't believe in nationalism I don't believe in states so you know, inevitably, I'm not going to really believe in war, um, but you know, these things could be very valuable to have in a wartime situation. So I just hope that uh, this isn't going to be, uh, you know, Red Dawn or something, having these things in the U.S. or or something. But uh, it says here, with U.S. approval, Moscow heads back to Afghanistan, and uh, just like Iran now is becoming the uh, budding power power in the Middle East, now all of a sudden they're uh, uh, launching satellites and oil productions up, and they got their first drone, and they're got their first service to surface air missile going, and now Russia is thinking about going back to Afghanistan because you know they got to protect their interests, just like the U.S. and the Western uh, powers protect their interests, which is not their people's, just that particular. Uh, uh, regional corporations' interest, not countries. And so, yeah, you have this going on. So I'm starting to think that this is kind of a shift right now. And I've been talking about this, not really uh, vocally, publicly, but uh, with friends of mine about how the East, that is China, Iran, uh, Russia, and a few other countries, will basically be um, taking on the reins as the new global power. Of course, the Rothschilds uh, faction is considered the quote Pindar, which is they hold the uh, ruling. They are the rulers right now. They are the leading family that holds the dis real decision-making power uh, in these ruling families. And of course, the Romanovs, the Eastern uh, establishment, is uh, I believe is taking the reins here. And Webster Tarpley even has kind of confirmed this. Not exactly what I'm saying, but he's but he has said in the past couple of years that Russia will become a new super global power. And uh, so I, that's what I, that's how I see that. And it's not really a conspiracy theory. World War I was pretty much about ruling families fighting over, you know, uh, turf, but also redesigning this new, uh, this new map uh, that they rule over and uh, changing the new control systems uh, from pre-democracy to democracy. And now we're going back to uh, post-democracy. So... A lot of info I just uh, gave you there, but uh, either way, Russian President Dmitry Medvedev played host last week to Afghan President Karzai and the leaders of Pakistan and Tajikistan at the Black Sea Resort of Soki. Says the group's second meeting in a year was a low-key affair, but the subtext was significant, mounting Russian concerns that Islamist militancy and cheap drugs emanating from Afghanistan are a threat to its national security, have made Moscow refocus on the region even as the US and NATO allies maneuver to draw down to see that drawing down you see 
two decades at passing the torch, that's what I'm getting at. Two decades after the Soviet army left Afghanistan in a humiliating defeat, Russia is poised to spend billions in the war-wrecked country to develop infrastructure, mineral, and energy reserves. No, that's probably one of the biggest reasons. The Russians were the first ones to discover the rich minerals that were in Afghanistan, um, but the U.S. Uh, faction of the global government, the Western side, uh, basically put out a bunch of uh, 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 news recently. One of them was the mineral find, uh, and that was according to Tarpley, who's just really an expert in this in this field, and uh, what do they call it, geosocial politics. And he says that that whole story was just a plan to bolster support for the Afghan war for the West, and uh, so they're losing that, and now they're taking over the reins. Moving on to the next article, this is Beirut wants Iran to quip Lebanon army. I actually covered this uh, two days ago, but look, Iran prepared to equip Lebanese army. <laughs> Iranian Defense Minister Brigadier General Amid uh, Fahidi says Iran is fully prepared to provide Lebanon's army with a cutting-edge military equipment. And uh, it, I covered this as well about two weeks ago where um, the U.S. backed out of supplying Lebanon Lebanon's army so they, they were cutting ties and that's what I said Lebanon and like Syria and uh, a few other countries in this area they're kind of caught in between uh, what is it um, a rock and a hard place whatever cliche you want to use uh, basically where they're being torn between whatever uh, which way the wind blows and that's how it was in World War two when uh, when the Reich when the Third Reich was winning and uh, the stars seemed to be aligned for the access to win a lot of uh, countries were siding with the access uh, you know looking back you'd be like well were you stupid but you know that's how it works another one from press tv lebanon detains another telecom spy this is from yesterday lebanon has arrested another telecom worker on suspicion of spying for israel bringing the number of telecom spy suspects to five this is a report published by the lebanese newspaper on tuesday said the suspect identified by his initials as tb was nabbed in a raid on his house um, in north menton and it says the police confiscated the personal computer of the suspect who was reportedly returned to lebanon a week ago the latest arrest brings uh to f the number to five of the lebanese telecom personnel charged with spying for israel since 2009 of April, Lebanon has arrested nearly 100 people, including members of the country's security forces and telecom personnel, on suspicion of spying for the Mossad. Also, um, there was a UK uh, spy that was just found. His body was sitting in a sports bag, smashed up in there, dead for, I guess, decomposing for two weeks. Iran to boost gasoline production. It says uh, this is a big step for Iran. This is why I'm covering it. They, they import a lot of their actual gasoline, even though they export a lot of oil. They don't have the refineries to, uh, to do it. But it says Iran's gasoline production will soon be increased by 20 million liters, making the country self-sufficient despite sanctions. The Iranian oil minister, see, they have sanctions, embargoes against their, uh, their uh, gasoline. So it says with the increase in production, Iran will not be in need of further gasoline imports. So the very big news, and I think a lot of this has to do with them feeling as if they're now uh, autonomous and sovereign because now they have their little reactor for energy up. And so this came out again today. Iran begins oil production in joint field. Iran has officially begun pumping crude oil from the Hemgan oil field shared with neighboring Oman in the Persian Gulf after a 400 million two-year development. The field is to produce 10,000 barrels a day, the finest and lightest of Iranian crude in the first phase, but its production level will reach 16,000 barrels in two months. The IRNA quoted Iranian oil minister Masad, uh, Mas uh, yeah, Masoud, sorry if I mispronounced these names, guys, uh, Mirko Zami, as saying on Tuesday, he said Iran's oil ministry invested around 400 million in a record time of two years to develop the project. Iran to launch Rasad-1 satellite in 2011 says Iran will put the domestically made Rasad-1 satellite into orbit by March next year, Iran's Minister of Communications and Information Technology says. And just to give you a little, a little, this is how I feel about it, right? Japan tried doing the same thing. You know what happened to Japan? They got rocked by a humongous earthquake. So, you know, you can talk about conspiracy theories, but... You could just say, okay, let's just say it's a coincidence. Coincidentally, Iran will be hit by an earthquake pretty damn bad in the next year. You can rest assured of that.
I'm not a prophesizer. I'm not a you know looking into a crystal ball. Um, I know the tools that uh, these globals possess, and they will use them because they've used them in the past. U.S. weighs expanded strikes in Yemen. Washington, this is from the Wall Street Journal, says U.S. officials believe Al Qaeda or Al Qaeda in Yemen is now collaborating more closely with allies in Pakistan and Somalia to plot attacks against the U.S., spurring the prospect that the administration will mount a more intense targeted killing program in Yemen. A targeted killing program. Wow, this is, you know, and it's for peace, right? So, says death sparks protest in Kashmir. It says thousands of protesters have taken to the streets in the Indian administered Kashmir after a teenager died of injuries he had suffered during an earlier class with Indian forces. The demonstration held in protest at the killing of a teenager turned violent in uh, Srinagar on Wednesday. Police fired warning shots to disperse the protesters who were attending the funeral of a 13-year-old uh, who died of severe injuries earlier in the day. Witnesses say he was beaten by government forces during a protest rally days earlier. And whereas uh, in the United States we just kind of stand here with glazed look over our eyes, demonstrators hurled stones at the Indian security forces at several locations at the Muslim majority region. And we have this other one from today's Zaman. says, austerity measures running well, but Greeks feeling the pain, says the plan to rescue Greece from bankruptcy has kicked in. And with a vengeance, as the government slashes spending and ha hikes taxes, the deficit is way down. But jobs are vanishing, shops are closing, and on the streets, gloom. And the streets, gloom is prevailing. Sorry, it says protesters beat a riot policeman during a mass rally against government austerity measures in Athens. And when I saw this picture, I was like, man, dude, Greeks don't mess around, dude. <laughs> dude, you don't see that in the U.S. or Canada or the U.K. He said, I. You know, okay, so the way I look at it is if you're going to be nationalistic and you believe, you know, in the state, if you're a statist, then, you know, you, it may actually be better to do something like this um, instead of just sitting by and then but still agreeing that you need a government. Um, it's either, you know, it's either that, it is, it's either black or white. So, you know, that's pretty much how it is. If you want to believe in government, then you're going to have to do this to get, you know, to be free. But if you don't believe in a government, then you're not necessarily obligated to go out there and, and, and use violence as a means. But government in itself is violence. So you have to answer with violence. And that's what you don't want to do. So the easy solution is just don't support government at all. And then you don't have to support violence. But of course, you know, this is just my opinion. This is my view. And uh, of course, you know, you can do whatever you want. And you have, you're entitled to your own views. So I respect that. This is Monk's protest in Chilliwa. It says, police personnel have today prevented a group of protesting Buddhist monks from marching towards um, the Hindu temple in Chilliwa. It says, the protesting monks have decided to march to the Colville to protest again, an animal slaughter, slaughter ritual that is expected to take place today. Media personnel in the area have reported that a tense situation has developed in Chilliwa as the monks have prevented, been prevented from marching towards the Coville. The riot police have reportedly been deployed in the area, and police have prevented the group of monks from reaching the Coville. So, good job, cops. And I already covered this, um, but coffins made with brotherly love have undertakers throwing dirt. Basically, some monks uh, here in the U.S. are trying to make some coffins, but funeral directors are using the state and saying that they need a license, you see? To squash competition, use the government, and that's how it works. This is from the Morning Star out of London. It says, U.S. fires on civilian Bagram protests. U.S. Fire, U.S. troops fired on thousands of Afghan civilians as they protested outside the massive U.S. military base at Bagram on Monday. They must not have been in the free speech zone. It says, a provincial police officer said at least one civilian was killed in the incident, but NATO asserted no civilians had been killed or injured. And the individual who, the journalist who was killed um, after police stomped him and he fell to the ground and his kidney bled to death, uh, the guy who, the pathologist who performed the autopsy or whatever, basically um, lied on it and was found guilty for doing so. Cocky Valley Cop incites rage. Snyder County resident officer out of control. A longtime local policeman is under fire by several Snyder County residents who say his arrogance and harassment of elder, elderly drivers makes him unfit for duty. Drug cartel suspected a massacre of 72 migrants. South Korea military drill envisions occupying North Korea.
In face of egg recall, FDA calls for more authority. Problem, reaction, solution. Like that? Two salmonella cases broke. And Arizonans choose their new slave.